It's so easy, the internet. We use it, for instance, to order our groceries or to find out what time our train is leaving. And even here in the Netherlands, we use it to discuss politics. What's going on in your village? What's going on in your country? And there's a lot of criticism on the internet as well. In many countries, though, this is a big problem. I welcome Fieke Jansen. Fieke Jansen researched the way bloggers in the Middle East use the internet, to be more precise, in Egypt, in Syria, Tunisia and Iran. Fieke Jansen. Um, the term digital activists came up during the Green Revolution last year in Iran. What does it mean? What is a what is a digital activist? Um, a digital activist is uh, somebody, it can be a human rights activist or a young blogger, uh, who uses the online to mobilize around certain issues or discuss politics. Um, and it usually happens in repressive states where there's limited freedom and they use the freedom the internet brings to mobilize or uh, link to other people or discuss certain topics that are difficult to talk about in, for instance, a bar or at home or at the university. How did it work in Iran, for instance? Uh, well, in Iran you saw that uh, there were yet opposition and a lot of people who voted for the opposition that um, didn't believe that the elections went fairly. And um, they wanted to demonstrate and uh, demand a re-election. What they did was they used Twitter, SMS, uh, mobile phones to spread the word that certain events were happening at the square and they were, would demonstrate and uh, demand re-elections. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they did was um, they documented human rights abuses or um, for instance uh, Neda, she's a young uh, woman who, who sort of became the image of the Green Revolution. She, she was, died, she it? died yeah, yeah, she got shot. And uh, this image was spread all through the world through uh, YouTube or Twitter. They, they took pictures of it and amplified it all through the world. And did it really change the way things are going in Iran? And did it, did, does internet, does web blogs, etc. Um, make changes in the rest of the Middle East, you think? Um, I think it's hard to say if it's really had a, a concrete effect. What you, you, there were no re-elections, so in the end the demonstrations uh, didn't have yeah, the end result they wanted. But uh, you have to see Iran as a very close society, so where people uh, are afraid to um, meet each other or discuss certain things. And the internet gives them just a little bit more freedom. And uh, maybe it's not a revolution per se and they change the society but they use the internet to get a little bit more freedom and maybe rem get, yeah, keep the status quo and then try to work towards a better democracy in the yes. future. Yes, now the situation in Iran that time was where you can compare it with a, a, a pressure cooker, uh, where on the other hand you, you researched as well the situation in Egypt, which is a bit more open society. What are people using their blocks for there and what, and what kind of, let's use this word, success are they having? Uh, well, Egypt is a, is a relative more free country than Iran. This also uh, concerns the internet. Uh, the Egyptian government doesn't block uh, uh, websites. Uh, you see that the first time um, there was a revolution in the Middle East, it was actually in Egypt on the 6th of April. Um, l workers went on strike with their unions and um, digital activists uh, used this to amplify it in the Egyptian societies to call people to also go on strike on the same day and you saw that this had a really big effect so it was a combination between the on and the offline and the online uh, were digital activists that tried to amplify why these people went on strike and what is important about it and the union that mobilized people from their members from their union to actually stop working and go on strike and the thing was there were, the minimum wages are really bad in Egypt and also uh, the work environment is really bad, especially uh, in the textile industry. And uh, what you saw is that uh, this demonstration actually made the government make promises to the union about better minimum wages and better work um, environments. And what actually was the role of the digital activists is that they amplified 
the reason why people went on strike online and it um, forced the independent media to cover this story. So it actually got, had a broader effect and everybody in Egypt was aware why these people went on strike. So you see in Egypt that this is a way why people use it. Another reason is that uh, there is a very independent blogger, she is very famous in Egypt, and a, women, uh, a lady approached her and said her husband was in jail for already 14 years. Well, he was actually, um, he wasn't sentenced, they said he was innocent, but he was still captured, he was still held in jail. And uh, she started writing about this in her blog and also the independent media, they are following her and they caught up on the story. And this man was released from prison because he was innocent and he wasn't supposed to be in jail. So you see that Egypt uses these, these limitations to bring to light social injustice that happens within Egypt.